In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the ankle, specifically for a tibia on talus somatic dysfunction. As I'm going through this demonstration, I'm going to be putting my hands on your ankle. I'm going to be moving it in a few different directions and giving you some instructions. If anything is uncomfortable, anything is tender, if you need me to stop or change what I'm doing, let me know. Is it okay if I begin? Yes. All right. So beginning with a posterior tibia on talus, our freedom of motion is in plantar flexion and our restricted barrier is in dorsal flexion. And because muscle energy is a direct technique, we're gonna to need to put the tibia on talus into its restricted barrier. So its restricted barrier is going to be dorsal flexion. So we need to find a position in which we can provide isometric resistance while maintaining the ankle in this dorsal flex position. And there are many different ways that we can do that, and I'm gonna demonstrate two. So for the first option, we're gonna put our thumbs directly on the talus, right at the joint line, and we're gonna wrap our hands around the plantar surface of the foot, and then we're gonna induce dorsiflexion by lifting the bottom of the foot and also pushing posteriorly on the talus. We're gonna push until we reach the restricted barrier. Once we reach that restricted barrier, we'll give our patient instructions to plantar flex against us. So go ahead and push your foot down like you're pushing on a gas pedal. We're gonna provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. Then we're gonna ask our patient to relax. Go ahead and relax. And as they relax, then we're also gonna relax for one to two seconds. And then we're gonna feel the talus move a little bit more posteriorly. We're gonna follow it to the next restricted barrier. And then we're gonna have our patient push down again. We're gonna provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. And then go ahead and relax. We're gonna pause. And then we're gonna follow to the next restricted barrier. We'll have our patient push down again. Again, isometric resistance for three to five seconds, and then relax. And then we'll follow to the next restricted barrier. Once we've done this for three to five times, we can then induce a passive stretch through the restricted barrier, and then we can reassess for somatic dysfunction. For an alternate contact for posterior tibia on talus, we can sit at the foot of the bed and we can use our hands and clasp them across the top of the foot and use our thumbs underneath the foot and we can induce dorsiflexion. So we can take one of our fingers, I like to use my fourth digit on my right hand and we can make direct contact to the talus. We can interlace the rest of our fingers and then we can take our thumbs and start lower on the foot, wrap our thumbs around the foot and then drive our thumbs up to induce dorsiflexion while also supporting a little bit of eversion and then pushing posteriorly on the talus. So we're kind of wrapping around the ankle and at the same time that we're wrapping and pushing posteriorly on the talus, we're also adding a little bit of traction. So we can do that until we reach the restricted barrier and then we can ask our patient to push down. So can you push down like you're pushing on a gas pedal? We provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds and then go ahead and relax. And then we're gonna pause, and then we'll feel some ease at the talus, and then we're going to follow it to the new restricted barrier, and then we're gonna have our patient uh, push again. Go ahead. And then relax. And then again, we're going to pause, feel it as it moves to the new restricted barrier, uh, and then repeat contraction and relaxation cycles for three to five times, then an optional passive stretch, and then return back to neutral and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. If instead we had an anterior tibia on talus, our freedom of motion is going to be dorsiflexion and our restricted barrier is going to be plantar flexion. So we're gonna to wanna to put our hands in a position where we can sufficiently provide isometric resistance in plantar flexion. So I prefer to use a, a contact very similar to the way I diagnose tibia on talus, and I use my index finger directly on the talus my hand wrapping around the foot, and my other hand uh, wrapping around the calcaneus. And then I can use that posterior hand as a fulcrum as I plantar flex the foot and also add a little bit of traction using my top hand. So that will bring the talus anterior and it will glide the tibia posterior. And I do that to like reach the restricted barrier. And then I'm gonna have my patient lift their toes up into dorsiflexion. So go ahead and uh, lift your ankle up and point towards your head. And then we're gonna provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds, then go ahead and relax. After they relax, we're gonna pause, wait one to two seconds, 
and then we'll feel the talus move a little bit further into plantar flexion. And then we're going to follow through the next restricted barrier. And then we're going to have our patient push up again. Go ahead. And after three to five seconds, we can have our patient relax. And then we're going to continue uh, contraction and relaxation cycles for a total of three to five times. And then we bring our patient back to neutral. And then we reassess for somatic dysfunction. If instead our patient was in a seated position, we can use variations on the same theme to accomplish the same uh, result. Can you go ahead and sit up? So I'm going to demonstrate this on the right ankle. So first, for a posterior tibia on talus, where we have a freedom of motion in plantar flexion and a restricted barrier in dorsal flexion, we can use our contact very similar to what we did in a supine position, and we could put our thumbs on the talus and wrap our hands under the plantar surface of the foot, and then we can not only dorsiflex the foot, but we can push down to the floor, push the ankle down to the floor, so we can induce more posterior glide on the talus, which will induce more anterior glide on the tibia. So we can push down and dorsiflex until we reach a restricted barrier, and then we can have our patient uh, push their foot down into plantar flexion. So go ahead and push down like pushing on a gas pedal. We provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds, and then we have our patient relax. Go ahead and relax. And then we pause. We'll follow as the talus moves to a new restricted barrier, and then we'll have our patient push again, and then relax. And after three to five contraction and relaxation cycles, we can induce an optional passive stretch, then return back to neutral and reassess for somatic dysfunction. If instead we had an anterior tibia on talus in which our freedom of motion was in dorsal flexion and our restricted barrier was in plantar flexion, we would use a contact uh, similar to what we would use for somatic dysfunction evaluation, where we're taking one hand, contacting the talus, wrapping our hand around, and using the other hand to cradle behind the calcaneus. And then we can induce plantar flexion and also lift the ankle up. So uh, we can use our thigh and our forearm as a fulcrum so that we can lift up and provide sufficient isometric resistance. So we'll plantar flex, add a little bit of traction from our top hand and support from the bottom hand until we reach the restricted barrier. And then we're gonna have our patient dorsiflex their foot while we provide isometric resistance. Go ahead and push up. And we can provide that isometric resistance for three to five seconds. Then we'll have our patient relax. After they relax, we relax, we pause at that position, we'll feel the talus ease a little bit more anterior and into more plantar flexion, and then we can meet the next restricted barrier. We'll have our patient push up again, provide isometric resistance, and then you can relax. And then after three to five contraction and relaxation cycles, we can add an optional passive stretch and then return our patient back to neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction.